What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 14 of the Average Joe Lawn Care Show. I cannot believe I've done 14 of these already. It seems like I just started these yesterday. But today, uh, I have uh, Connor Ward with me as my co-host. You guys... Oh, I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't need to introduce Connor. He knows... He knows. Everybody knows him. If, if, if you're on the chat, you definitely know... Connor and uh if you've been to my if you know me you there's no way you don't know Connor so I hope you guys enjoyed last week's uh time off I I was scheduled to have Chuck but uh he was a little under the weather so we rescheduled him and we're gonna have him on on March 19th I believe so I just decided to take the week off and uh not bore you guys again with another show but I'm excited about tonight's show I have the First lawn rebel ever in our community. Connor, how are you doing? I am good. How are you? Good. I'm a little nervous. I'm yeah, little he nervous. keeps saying he's nervous, but if anybody's nervous, it's me. Because sometimes I just don't know what I'm going to get with Connor. So <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but uh, um, but yeah, it, it'll be a fun night. Uh, I hope I I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, I you know it, it's to no surprise that I have a rather large a larger audience than normal at this point in time in the show than I normally do, just because I have Connor and um, so I'm sure I have plenty of his people uh, coming over on to the chat and or the show and watching. And I appreciate that. Um, just to kind of give a quick rundown of what I do on the show. The show's pretty pretty casual. It's very light. I, you know, we don't dive into anything that's controversial or anything that the point of this show is to be uh kind of a winding down of your week, uh relaxing, having a good time, laughing. I'm sure Connor has plenty of stories that he could tell us that will make us all laugh and uh just kind of, you know, ease into a good weekend and have a good time talking about lawn care stuff and whatever else we may run into that uh, relates to that kind of stuff. So that's just kind of how we keep it on the show. And um, yeah, thank you for everybody tuning in. Connor, are you, have you gotten past the jitters? Are you still nervous? I'm stressed out folks. I just am a little bit worried. So it's all good though. I've done these live shows before folks. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to take your calls and first time I'm a first time caller here, so just a little bit nervous. So just pardon my my it my uh, my nerves here. So, uh, how much snow are you sitting on right now, or is sitting on you? I should say. So I'd probably say this about probably have about six inches of hard packed snow on the ground. Um, we, it's been a really bad snow year for us. We need the water here in Utah. We're a very dry, arid state. We don't get a lot of rain in the, in the summer months. And so the snow is, our, the mountains are our are, are, uh, snow storage. So if it snows in the mountains and then it comes down in the spring and then we have reservoirs that store it in the, for the summer. And so this year was a really poor snow year. And so I, we really only got about maybe 12 to 18 inches or something, not a lot. So there's about six inches. The lawn is completely covered in snow, and I'm looking forward to that day where I get to see the lawn again. But that's not far away, and I know a lot of you guys are already seeing your lawn, and I've been talking to some folks who have been seeing it. So if you haven't put your pre-emergent down, I recommend doing that if you're in the southern states. In the northern states, it's probably just a little bit too early, but uh, I would be, I would definitely be thinking about doing that here. Well, soon. how much snow do you normally get uh, during the winter? Like, what's your, what's the average snowfall you guys typically get? Uh, we probably get, I have no idea. I would just venture to guess sixty to a hundred inches, and and this year we probably had a couple of feet, really. Okay, a couple of so feet. You're pretty far down from what you I think I do. think we're about 85 percent of normal wow is where we're at water wise okay. so it's it's been uh disappointing to say the least I have not had the opportunity to use the old uh snow blower really all that often so I got a couple of questions for yeah. you pal 
You you good with oh, that? Oh yeah, throw. Okay, I I've, I've prepared a few <laughs> questions, and I I just I, I I need to get this off my chest. Okay, yeah. you good? Okay, so I just need to know: Are you Coke or Pepsi? Uh, I probably Coke. Okay, what do you mean probably? I can. Coke? I mean, if I had the this choice, is... I'll go with Coke, but I don't mind Pepsi. I'm not. I'm not like hardcore. Like, oh, I can never drink Pepsi or something like that. But I'm I. I don't drink soda a lot in the first place, but oh come on! <laughs> but if, like I said, if I had the choice, I'd pick Coke, and you know that's just where I align with that. But I again, I don't mind Pepsi. I'm not, I'm not a firm. I'm not like you. I'll say, <laughs> I'm a diehard Coke guy. Yeah, come I on. know. So here's the deal: I was a Pepsi diehard for years and years and years. Okay, like 10, 15 years. Or like ever since I can remember, and then about 15 years ago, I flipped the switch, and I've not gone back. And there's no going back here, folks. Coca-Cola is the real deal. And if you and if you know about McDonald's and their Coke, if you know, you know, okay. And some people will know what I'm saying. Some people won't. But it's all about the Coca-Cola class. So I've heard that. I've heard that the McDonald's Coke is somehow different or maybe they've maybe they've figured out how to align the sugars in their food with coke the the drink and whatnot so i don't know but i why what what made you make the hard switch like why were we like you know what forget pepsi i'm gonna go coke now <laughs> <laughs> well it's just it is is what it is pal it's all about image i'm all about image <laughs> and so like i couldn't be caught dead not drinking a coke I'm like, okay, well, okay, if that's it, I'm a sucker for peer pressure. I'll be the first to admit it. I am a sucker for peer pressure. Don't kid yourself. If if everyone's jumping off a cliff, guess who else is jumping off a cliff? Me. Okay. That's all I'm saying. So, so are you like are that's you, just kind of how regards it went down. to soda, are you like only Coke? Like will you drink anything else? Like will you drink like someone mentioned uh sun kissed up in here? Oh yeah, every once in a while those those little stragglers will come in, but it's a Coca Cola Classic type type of experience. So you're not you don't like the vanilla Coke or I like that orange vanilla. That stuff tastes good to me, but with the pandemic, it's disappeared. Oh, really? Okay, next question here, yeah, fella. Hot dog or cheeseburger? Hot dog or cheeseburger? Yeah, cheeseburger, right? Uh, I'd probably go with cheeseburger. Okay, so here's a follow-up question for the hot dog. Say you get like the Dodger dog, right? Where it's 12 inches and it covers and that comes outside of each side of the bun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, so it's longer than the bun. <laughs> so on the reverse side of that, or the flip side, when when the bun is longer than the dog, when you get to that last bite, are you throwing away the 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 bun that doesn't have any dog inside? Or are you eating that last bite with no dog inside the bun? Uh, I'm not. I'm not a wasteful person, so I'd probably just eat it. Oh, okay. Because it, I'm like, I'm like, throw that yeah, sucker. Because all it's got on there is some condiments. I mean, it, I don't know. You eat breadsticks and uh, muffins and all those types of things. It's no different at the end of a hot dog. You can think of it as like a little, little. I don't know. N muffin's not the right word, but uh, you get what I'm saying. I don't think I'm not. I'm one of those people that all right. I'm not gonna. I don't like throwing food away in the first place. So I, I'll, I'll, I'm being. I'm gonna be the guy that eats it. Okay. What do you got next? Okay. Okay. Um, switching gears. Real or rotary? So I really like real mowing. I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the time to do real mowing because I know what kind of time it actually takes to... Well, I don't know, but I, I see what it takes. And to a degree, I know because I did it with that that small Bermuda patch at my old house. And I could see how much I had to stay on top of that mowing, even though it was um, just a very short or a small piece of uh, lawn. It was only like, I don't know, 500 square feet. So I knew what kind of time it took just from that little bit of an experience. So I would I would like to do that, but it's just not it's not in the cards for me right now. But I like rotary mowings too. I, I think rotary like a lawn that is that is rotary mowed that's well well kept. 
I think looks really good too. It's just a different kind of look. So it's really just about what you want. There is no there. I mean, there's no comparison. Like there, a real mode lawn versus a rotary mode lawn. I mean, it just looks night and day different. I I like the look of the real mode lawns. Like they just look. It looks like a carpet. Your lawn was like you were. Right. You were the one that you were right. the first one that I ever started watching that was real mowing um because you you were i can't i've gone down the list before but i know and i can't remember exactly but i know like uh alan was the first guy i found then it was ryan then i think it was you and it just kind of snowballed from there i don't remember but i know like you were one of the top three to five youtubers that i found initially um during my whole endeavor of learning more and more about lawn care and just becoming more involved with the community. So I agree. LCN baby. Number one, he is my number one. He is Mr. Popular and he's that guy that everybody wants to be like, okay. Me included. So that's exactly the same story find lawn care nut i learned how to dominate my neighbor's lawn from him okay so I mean, he was he was anyways. the guy that kind of coined that that whole term as far as dominating mm -hmm. your neighbor and stuff like that like i love watching his old indiana videos where he was he was just because he was kind of the only he was the only guy as far as i knew when it came to when he was his videos when he was in indiana and jake was a little a little tyke <clears throat> but what what's going on in the yeah those were those were good days for sure those were good days for sure so i got i got another one here for you what is your uh favorite candy i'm a candy guy uh i like i like starburst and uh, st uh so these kind of all line up together because i like combining them it's starburst sweet tarts and skittles Oh yeah, I'm a hard. I'm I, what the or, original red or? Oh yeah, Skittles. Yeah, you're talking. You're, oh. Is that what original red? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I like the I like hard the uh, the hard candy. I'm not really. I don't mind. Like, oh, I should. I should. I I take that back because Laffy Taffy's another one I really like too. That that's my go-to right banana there. Banana Laffy Taffy is disgusting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stick with the core value of the Laffy Taffy, okay, folks. Core value here. Core value. So, yes, sir. No Cadbury cream eggs, Mister Richard Nettles. Don't even now, kid those. Yourself. I don't mind you when it, 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 it's a seasonal thing, like around Easter time. I don't mind Cadbury cream eggs every every now and then. I'm not like my go-to is definitely what I just mentioned. But I don't mind the Cadbury cream eggs from time to time. Okay. Well, <laughs> I I can agree with you. I'm a chocolate guy, but I'll take me a good Laffy Taffy. Okay, folks. So um, let's see. What else we got here? I think I've got one or two more questions, and then that's all I've got. So are you a big city or out in nature? Uh, I'm a balanced guy. I like the I like the balanced approach. I don't. Okay, I'll put it this way. I can't live. I would never be able to live in a big city, even though I've never lived in a big city. I've always been a suburb person, but I don't think I could ever live out in like rural areas where you're, you know, it's like a 20 minute drive to the grocery store or something like that. Um, maybe that's an exaggeration because I've never lived out there. So. Uh, cause like right now I'd say like where we live now is kind of a balance. Like, cause we are on the cusp of rural areas and in your suburb areas. Uh, cause we're no, we're not as close to the St. Louis area as we used to be. We're a little bit farther West. So it can mean, cause you can drive right now where we live, you can drive five, maybe 10 minutes down the road and you're in the middle of a cornfield, but you don't get that where I live. Like it feels like you're in a suburb area, um, kind of close to the city, but not. So I like this, like, cause I, it's a balanced feel in my opinion. So you're happier in this place than the last one. Um, yeah. Cause I like when I grew up down in Dallas, 
and, I, and the DFW area is a huge, huge metroplex, but, um, we had, I had a similar feel when I grew up there. Like it wasn't, I could go five or 10 minutes down the road and it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere when you're really not because you're just outside of Dallas or the DFW area. Um, <clears throat> or you're still inside of it. It just, it's so spread out that you feel that way. So it, this reminds me more of the area I grew up in as far as how spread out things kind of feel and those types of things. So I liked the area I we used to live in because it was familiar from the perspective of it was uh, near the area that we used to live in when we lived in St. Louis. So I was, was just comfortable with those surroundings. But this area that we moved to, I've never lived out here before. So it's uh, new, but I like it because it's familiar in a way, even though it's not familiar, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So like I said, I'm kind of a mixed person. I've never really lived in the you know, deep part of a city, but I've also never lived like in a real rural area. So there you go. Okay. One more question. Um, do you like to dance? Yes, but I don't, I'm kind of, I, I don't know. I, I like to dance more in private. I'm more of a private dancer. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> I like dancing with my wife. Like my wife and I would go, uh, we've gone a few times to dance at some, um, like country dancing places around here. I like doing that. Um, we haven't been able to do that lately. Um, even before the pandemic, we weren't able to do it, but that's something I enjoy doing. But I, I just, in, I enjoy listening to music in the first place and music in general sometimes makes me dance or start singing. Right. When you feel it, you just exactly. can't help it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like when you're feeling it, you just got to let loose and you don't got to, you don't need to worry about what other people are saying, looking at you thinking you're just a scaredy. Cat. No, that's for sure. I, 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 I will start thinking about what other people are thinking when they're looking at me. Like that's, that's just me, you know? What? Yeah. What are you? Do you like to dance? All right. So oh, kid yourself. Of course, I like so to dance. I have a question for you. So starting out in your like, because I've always I've gone back and watched a lot of big YouTubers' videos, which you should go do because it it's pretty hilarious. Like if you ever gone back and watch Grass Daddy's first video, it's hilarious. And I don't think he was intending it to be funny, but <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> But going back to like some of your older videos, you have to be honest, you were a bit more reserved than what you where you are nowadays in your videos. So what happened uh, to make you just suddenly be like, you know what? I'm dropping the curtains and people are going to see a different Connor. Yeah, well, what what happened? Did happen. How did that happen? Um. I'm surprised you noticed that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I've never liked being on camera. I am a reserved person. I know that everybody will say, oh, yeah, 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 you're not reserved. I am an introvert, folks. Like, I know that you guys aren't going to think that, but generally I like to just chill and relax. I don't like to be up front and center. I like to be the guy in the crowd that's just kind of hidden. Uh, that's the true core me. That's the true core me. So I never liked being on camera. I never liked um, hearing my voice on camera. Okay, so that's that was hard. Uh, always a hard thing for me. And so it's, it was intimidating at first. And I kind of never planned on being on YouTube. But that just kind of happened, I, I guess. Um, I just started making videos with my phone. And the... And so I was just scared. Like that's, that's, there's no, there's no two ways about it. I was scared and I wasn't comfortable in front of the camera. So, and then, you know, as, as people started watching my videos, I realized that, oh, this is actually catching on. And so people actually want to watch what I'm doing. And to be honest with you, I never intended my lawn care well, or my channel to be a lawn care channel. I always wanted to, it to be more of like a vlogging type of uh, channel where I'm just really showing what I'm up to. 
building this, building that, working on my lawn, just showing what I'm interested in. And I had no idea anybody would be interested in it, but it, it started to catch on. And at the time I was very interested in lawns and I still am. And so that's just kind of what stuck. And so I guess when people started to, to see the real me and I started to become more comfortable with the, uh, with the camera, I just decided to let my walls down. Like, really, I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm always been a little bit crazy. <laughs> from like, <laughs> everybody's a little crazy. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a little bit of crazy in yeah. them. Um, well, I, I mean, that's one of the I things just, I've always appreciated about your content is, uh, I've always wanted to mine to be kind of a vlog style as well, but I know like when you vlog, you're kind of recording a lot of stuff cause, and then you have a ton of footage to go through and at my, I've never, not that that, I guess that kind of like, uh, made me not want to do that because I, I was like, I don't have time to go through all this footage. So I need to be a little bit more like, uh, I guess. I don't know, intentional about what I'm recording so I can have like, I know what I have so I can more easily just put it together. But I know like from a vlogging standpoint, like what you do, I know you just let it roll <laughs> and then you just, you, yeah, you I do. catch what you catch and then you go through the hours of footage. I'm, I'm assuming it's hours. I don't know. Yeah. And then you, you put together a, a nine, 10 minute video from probably four to five hours of footage. Like, I appreciate that because I, but, and I would love to do that. I just, I don't know. I don't, cause I, I just know how much kind of time, I know how much time it takes to do that. If that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely is a time consuming thing, but I couldn't imagine myself personally doing a, a video scripted. Sure. I did. I've done a couple of things with Ryan. Uh, we've done a couple of scenes and stuff together where we, you know, really set things up and did a scripted scene. And that was fun. I loved it, but it's just, it was just not me. Um, I would have a hard time, um, just a hard time acting. I would be sure. a terrible actor in my opinion. Cause I just, I just, I'm, I don't do lines and stuff like that. I just, I personally just like to turn the camera on and just let her rip. And whatever comes out, comes out. And I need to tell you guys that um, the people watching this or listening, um, I do edit these videos. So, you know, I choose what goes in and what doesn't go in. So the some of the things that people are like, oh, that's crazy. You know, he's doing this or that or whatever. I'm choosing to put that in. I could have very well taken that yeah. out. So I choose to put in the things that I put in. And there's lots of things that, that do get recorded that I don't put on the camera. Sure. And so it, it is so much fun though. Like I, I do love it. The editing part is very time consuming it, it's fun, but it's, it takes a long time to create a 10 minute mm -hmm. video. So for me, it takes probably several nights. I, I, you know, I work during the day, I have a day job. I'm a contractor and then I work and then I work on, outside in the lawn or doing my projects from five to nine or whatever. And then I edit from nine to 12 and it takes me three or four nights just to create a 10 minute video. Yeah. So it, it is worth it uh, because um, for me, YouTube is not a huge money maker. Yes, I do make money on YouTube um, a little bit. It's not, it's not my full time income or anything like that. And it's not even anywhere near that. But the best part about YouTube are the people, okay? Without a doubt, 100%, number one, are the people. Like you, we get to do this together. And then the friends that I've made, Ryan, Alan, um, all the rest of the folks. You know, the Lawn Tools, the Lawn Whisperer, the people, Jimmy, all the people that you've had on your podcast, John Perry, and, and so on. It's That is the best part about YouTube doing YouTube and then the when you when you do when you do a video and you get the nice people on the other end of the video that that give you the comment saying hey you know I appreciate what you're doing thanks for showing me this that and the other you know what yeah. I mean and I can't tell you how much easier it would be to freaking mow the lawn or do a project without filming oh, yeah. it it's a lot easier yeah. 
Well, so I but wouldn't say it's worth it because it's fun. Yeah, and and I wouldn't say like I wouldn't say mine are necessarily scripted. I usually just have an idea, or I I try to brainstorm about like, all right, you know, I I want to make sure I say something about this if I know I'm going to make a video about a certain topic. Like I I've never the only video that I can think of that I actually had something written down was when we were doing the uh, the Rodney Smith thing a couple years ago. Cause that I wanted oh, to yeah, make sure I was sure. saying specific things, but generally like, I don't ever have like scripted things. I might have like bullet points, like saying, Oh, I want to make sure I say this or that. But, and so I guess to a degree that's scripted. Um, but, and there's nothing wrong. Yeah. With that. And so lately, uh, cause lately I've just been like doing more time-lapse videos and cause I, I was like, I don't want to, I want to do less talking and just more doing kind of stuff. Cause I don't find myself very interesting to listen to talk. So I'm like, well, uh, if I don't find myself interesting to talk to, I guarantee you most of the other people don't either. So I'd rather just show people, hey, this is what I'm doing or this is what I did or look at this transformation um, and kind of go from there. Because that's just, it's easier for my schedule. Because I like making videos and, and I like making content for the same reason that you do. It's... Uh, I I really enjoy interacting with the the audience um and the people in the community because that's one thing that I've just has blown my mind is how interwoven everybody is like even the big and small guys it's you know I don't really feel like there's a lawn care YouTuber at at least at this juncture that is so above somebody else that they won't talk to them or something like that. Especially if you, you know, if they're reaching out in a respectful way, I feel like most everybody will, you know, give feedback or, or just say hello and just kind of interact with those people. And that's what I, I found enjoyable, um, about our communities from the, um, the spectrum of creators from big to small. It, everybody has a degree of respect for everybody. And at least from my experience, um, I know there's some intertwined drama here and there, but I try to avoid that as much as possible. And I think you do as well. Um, but you did mention, which is, I think a good segue into, uh, Oh, oh wait, 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 <laughs> wait. I just want to say one more thing before you close me off, pal. Okay. I just want to say, scripted videos are not bad okay it's just not for me like a lot of people do very well with a script and it's fantastic they have awesome videos and it's perfect and it works very well and it, and it people respond to different things all differently so that's just not me so if you guys like scripted videos or you if, if that's what you feel comfortable with do that you know what i mean do what you feel comfortable doing so I just want to say, I'm, that's all I wanted to say is just that, 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 cause that, that's important to say. No. And I do what, and I, what feels good to you. Right. And I would, uh, I would, I would play off that and to say to any, any small YouTubers, including myself, cause I don't feel like I still have like a rhythm or, or, or my, uh, a style. Like I still, I still try to play around with trying to do different things to find a better style that I feel is more me because i don't i don't feel like i'm always myself in videos because i do have a, i do have a degree of sarcasm and and joking in me but it's hard for me to do it because i usually my sarcasm and joking usually plays off other people where your sarcasm and you you're very interesting because when you joke around in your videos you're talking to the camera as though you can see and hear your audience so that's what's and and I'm not able to do that. Like that's a degree of comfort. I'm not at that. I'm I'm not at that level with the camera, because um, I like I've told other people. Like for me, I joke around with people, but that's usually because I can play off one another, or that person and make a joke back at them or something like that. I I'm not really good at like joking to a camera, or like kind of like you do. I don't know. It's a skill in my degree. But what I was saying is for all the small YouTubers, like or anyone starting out or thinking about doing it, you're not going to find a style or your your rhythm immediately. You're going to take... It, it can take a long time to kind of figure out. And as you kind of mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, uh, 
you know, you were, it took you some time to kind of drop your walls to be more you on the camera. And I don't know how, how, how long would you say that took you to kind of get to that level? A year. Yeah. I would say a year. I would say a year and it, and sometimes maybe more for somebody to really truly find their style, their rhythm when they're making videos and you're not going to find it. But like I've I've seen across the board and I think you would attest to this, the best thing to do is just be yourself and do you don't try to mimic or imitate somebody else cuz you're that's going to be a kind of a hard thing to do over a long course of period of time. Wow. There's a lot of cool people in the chat that I've never had in the chat. We're... Yeah, let's 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 address this, okay? I've got a couple of things to address oh. here. I see these people in the chat, okay? We've got the lawn care nut, the ultimate <laughs> lawn care celebrity. He's in the house, okay? He is in the house, and the first thing I see him say is, Connor stole from me. This is the biggest <laughs> bunch of crap, Mr. LCN, lawn care nut, Alan Hain. This is not true. I did not steal from you. I rightfully took what was mine, okay? That was mine. And see that little picture back there, folks, of me? <laughs> okay, that's me. Lawn Care Nut had that, without my permission, in his bathroom. And I just decided, hey, this is mine. I'm taking it. And he's like, no, 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 you can't have it. You can't have it. And that's the big, biggest bunch of crap. Ryan Noor, you're in there. Just He's in there ca casting shade. Yeah, throwing shade. <laughs> saying, oh, yeah, that's the best you got on your mullet. Oh, yeah, pal. You want to see you out there trying to make a mullet. You, haven't, you ain't seen nothing yet, pal. You just wait until I get the front cut. I'm going to win that freaking... Uh, contest and you ain't gonna come close so when, is, when is that so don't when even does that contest come to a close mid-april the, the 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 story is we are going to wait until it's time to mow okay legit okay so you close the season you don't cut your hair and then when it's time to mow then you cut it okay and who can ever have who can get the best um who can get the best wig? That's what we. That's what we want. Alan said he's sending you a ten ninety nine. <laughs> oh please, please, Al, <laughs> you better not. You send me the ten ninety nine, I'll send it back to you. Shove it in your face. So, anyways, so what were you saying? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I was just saying like there's a lot of people in the chat. I just want to say hello to you. I mean, I can't even. It's hard to keep up with this because there's so many. Connor, you brought the biggest crowd to the to my podcast since I've started it, so thank you. Um, so I, without going through the long laundry list of names, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, whether you're a big influencer, a small influencer, or not an influencer at all, thanks for watching, thanks for participating in the chat. It is very much appreciated. Um, so yeah. Oh, Lawn Care Nuts said there's no good in me. There's no good in me. He's like, don't let him fool you. Don't let him fool you. This is a bunch of crap, okay? I wouldn't have invited myself down to your place, Big Al, had I not known that I was rightfully um, welcome, okay? So don't you just sit here and tell me, oh, yeah, you stole from me every freaking time. No, I'm just doing my due diligence and taking care well, of you. you know I'm doing you, you a favor, You know we're just going to find a different and maybe even worse picture to put, put above the toilet, don't you? Oh, no. That is not going... Okay, if you're going to put it in the bathroom, at least put it in front of the toilet so when <laughs> Brett's sitting on the toilet, he can look at me in the face. Okay, Al? You put him on the other side of the wall so when he's sitting there, he can take care of things. That would be funny. Or creepy. Yeah. Yeah, creepy. <laughs> creepy. That's a threat for you, folks. Oh, man. So, anyway. Um, yeah. But uh, what I was going to say, since you were talking about the community and the people in the chat, the good the good people in the chat, um, it made me think of, it was a good segue for the, uh, the Keyboard Warrior segment. This segment is... This, uh, this segment is is all about uh, talking about the, the well, exactly what it is, the Keyboard Warriors. And I actually got the name of this section from you because you mentioned it in one of your videos uh, 
one time and I was like, oh, that's a that's a good name for it. I'm sure it's been around for a while, but Connor, you're going to have to give me some uh, some context on some of these because I don't know all of it. But uh, the first one, which was, oh, it, I think it was one of your the recent videos where you had the Toro, the snowblower. Oh, yeah. This guy said, uh, you say stupid things in your video. Why would Toro give you blowers for you to comment? Really bad review. Then Connor had the swift reply of, you say stupid things in your comments. Why would you? Re- why would you comment? <laughs> um. So, anyways, folks. So Toro gave me a snowblower. Okay. He said, "Oh yeah, we want to send you a snowblower." So, okay, okay, sure. I'll take a snowblower. I need a snowblower. If you haven't seen the fiasco of what happened to my two snowblowers, um, you can go watch that video. But, um. Yeah, that's exactly it. So you get this stupid guy in here claiming that, hey, you say stupid things in your video. Well, of course I do. Yeah, like if Toro wants to send me something, great. Send it on over. But I don't do things with the script, and I'm not not going to do that. So, like, he's coming to my channel for a review, and my channel is not a how-to channel, folks. It It is an entertainment channel only. This is a for entertainment factor and value only. If you want to buy my products... Great, let's let's spend some money and buy them. But I'm strictly here for entertainment. And so this guy wanted a, a review, and clearly that was not a review. I think you were just showing video. how they were working through how you... Uh, you were showing how they work through what you were doing that day. Yeah, right, exactly. And, they, and it works great. So no shade on Toro. Toro is awesome, and it was awesome, seriously. Like, that, that snowblower really is great. And I even like the little power shovel thing too, like for real, like off the record or whatever. It's awesome. So I I like it. It's Andrew got marched down the hall because of your snow broom and croc stunt. Ha! He need he needed it. <laughs> what else you got, right. pal? <laughs> uh this one is <laughs> this is the most dad thing I've ever seen. Good on you, Pops. I didn't know if some of these were, like, playing off of others, but I was just, I was trying to highlight the ones that I thought you were sending me. Um, I don't know. So that, so the rest of the comments are from that sand oh. video that I did. That's my, obviously my most important, my most uh, viewed video. And that one, oh my gosh, there were some keyboard so warriors me, on that let one. Let me go to the and... next one, because I think the next one you sent me was kind of like people commenting off of a comment. Um, yeah, yeah. Because there is some good ones here. Mom, the weird guy at the corner is throwing sand on his lawn again. I can't. Sorry about the text, guys. I I did my best to make these as big as I could. Uh, if I did this, if I did this, my neighbors would think I'm, uh, I'm cracked out. Why the hell is the guy s- sweeping his yard? Dang it! I made that way too small. Uh, well, at least I'm not. Come on. What? What'd you say come on for? Oh. Go on. Uh, Well, at least I'm not using a vacuum. I'm keeping clear of him at, at parties. I also wondered about the guy, the lawn guy. He's uh, tired of... Dang it. Why did I make him so... Sm- t- it says... Hey, listen, there let you me go. have Take this, it away, Connor. Take fella. it away. This guy, so this guy replies to the guy. So we got the main comment. And the guy's like, hey, that weird guy's throwing sand on his line again. And then they got these other people replying to this crap, okay? The one guy says, I'm keeping clear of this guy at parties. I've also wondered about this lawn guy. He's so tired after only three hours of work, he gets a headache after operating his 4 by 4 and his pink flamingo on his T-shirt. I guess that just about says it, really. I guess that just about says it all, really. So that's just... That's Mr. Keyboard Warrior, and those are the type of... And then people thumb that sucker up seven times, folks. (laughs) That's a bunch of crap. And then we got this other nasty lady that pipes in. She says, LOL, I'm thinking the same thing. He's out of shape. (laughs) I'm a mom of two and have four acres landscaped, cut, and weed whacked by noon. I move 150-pound boulders around and constantly edge, etc. Also... Does not seem healthy for this grass, the worms, or groundwater, all that sand. It is what it is, folks. 
you can you can hate. Haters are gonna hate. That's all there is to it. Yes, right? and thank you for taking that away because you read it way more interesting than I could ever. Oh, so and uh, so going off of that, off of the negative keyboard warrior stuff, and going back into your uh, what you're talking about, like what some of the what is some of the like the really good stuff that you can think of off the top of your head that is like kind of made you kept going and making you you know uh keep going with your videos like hey wow that was really nice for that person to say they didn't even need to say that kind of stuff does anything like come off the top of your head uh when i asked that or is, is there just some oh yeah for sure for sure so i often think to myself man this is so much work creating these videos and you know, the money isn't great. I'm really kind of doing it for fun. Yes, I do make money, um, but it's not a crazy amount. But um, the thing that keeps me going and the reason I continue to make videos is the the, the genuine nice comments that I get. Um, every once in a while, somebody will send me an email and it's just heartfelt. It's just heartfelt. It feels good. And they're just saying things the way they feel. They say, hey, thanks for entertaining me. Thanks for helping me with my lawn. You know, it's turned around to the things that you've told me to do. It's made a big, big difference. And it's just, it's big. That those That is the reason. It's the people that are heartfelt that say, hey, thank you. You know, or, hey, my husband really likes your channel or whatever, or somebody that's emailing or my son, he really likes your your channel, loves to watch what you're doing. So the, those are the reasons that I continue to do it. And my is it greed and money driven? Sure. Yeah. A little bit. But at the <laughs> same time, like it, it's the people, it's the people on yeah. the other side of the videos, without a doubt, that keep me going. That's always, uh... It's the people. And then the and then. The commenters, I mean, the people that don't like to comment, I get it. I never used to comment on videos ever. I totally understand not wanting to comment. Just want to stay hidden, stay in the shadows. I get it. I never was a commenter before. But since I started making videos, I realized that how valuable those comments are to the yep. creator. It, it is yep. huge. Okay. It is huge. It's feedback to let you know, hey, this is this is good, you know, like... Everything isn't about the number of views. Yep. So that's not what it's about. It's about the people on the other end watching it. Yeah, and I wish there was a better way to bring to light some of those uh, people in our community that aren't creators or, or on social media. Because you know there's a lot of those people out there. Because, I mean, there's our community. It, it, it is pretty big as far as, like, who's on social media. But there's so many people, I feel like, that are constant and consistent commenters people i see in the chat that are on everybody's watching everybody's videos they're just not content creators themselves but and I, i'm sure beyond that there's even a ton of people that just watch that like what that like what people do and just don't comment um it'd be cool to somehow bring those people to light somehow uh just to you know show people how big the community actually is and those types of things so um but i wanted to also say speaking of leaving comments on videos uh, and the like button. If you like our show tonight, uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, hey, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't bother me. You let me know. Give me your feedback. <clears throat> but uh, no, that's because I know you always say that, Connor, on your videos, like how much you love your audience and stuff like that. And because I, you, you, you I really do. You genuinely say that at the end of your end of your videos and if anybody's watching i mean it's it to me it was it's always been clear that it wasn't just something you were just saying to blow you know blow people off or just say it to say it like you're you're i can tell like you're genuinely saying it cuz you appreciate the people watching and those types of things so it is an it is a interesting kind of kind of deal this, this is like nothing i've ever experience before uh youtube so it's just yeah i don't know it's it's a it's a fun thing for sure and like i like i said everything is everything is all about the people on the other end whether it's friends in the community or viewers so so i did i did want to say one thing so i just want to say that um um 
going back to what you were saying about my my I, being a little bit reserved in the beginning versus kind of where I'm at now. What you see, folks, on my my channel is what it's really like. Am I hamming it up for the camera? Maybe a little bit, sure. You know, the camera's on, but at the same time, that is the real me. Okay, I'm going to tell you how I really feel about something whether it's good or bad, you know, I, I want my channel to be a real world scenario to be for you, you know, to be for you and, you know, the real people out there, like I'm the same as you, you know what I mean? We are no different. We're just a dude out in the lawn that likes to mow the lawn. We're one in the same. And I, and I just am the guy that's filming it. So like, we're no different. And, um, yeah, so what you see is really how I really am. I mean, ask Alan Hain, the lawn care nut. Ask Ryan. Ask these people, the lawn tools. They've seen me in person without the camera on, and they've seen me in front of the camera. So it is what you see is what you get. Well, the me. first time I met you was last year. No, not last year. Two years ago, the 2019 GIE. That was the first time I ever met you in person. And... uh I don't know. It was it was exactly like what I expected, because <laughs> like like I, I in the video in the description of this video, there's not there's not a day that I can watch your video and not, videos and not laugh about something dumb you said or something goofy you're doing out in the lawn. Like there's, I think that's a great quality that if you can't laugh, if if there's people that can't laugh at what you're doing they should probably just not watch anyway because nothing that you can do is going to make them laugh, which I just find that kind of hard to believe because there's just so much stuff you do. Like even my wife, she'll be, she'll be, she knows who you are. Cause she, she was laughing hysterically with me at the, uh, at your story video about the snowblower last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that day sucked. <laughs> that day sucked. But, or that that whole turn of events just just. Sucked. But what I was so, saying is last year, the, I don't know. 2019 GIE when I met you, like that was so cool to to meet you and so many of the other people. But uh, to see like you and like how goofy you are, like I remember going to the Spiker booth and doing the giveaways and stuff like that, and the the Spiker people were just eating <laughs> it up. They loved it. how just goofy you were and everything so that was that was a lot of fun and i can attest to what you were saying as well as about like that you are who you are on camera in general you know off camera as well so <clears throat> so there's actually one more thing i wanted to say about that and that is um that i i also am trying to convey to people in my videos that hey folks this is just grass okay it's just flipping grass and it's just not a big deal if you screw something up it's grass folks it'll grow back you know you can reseed you can resod you can replant yeah you might have to spend a little money and time but it's just not a big deal it's nothing to get stressed out about you know get if your math isn't just a little bit right on what you apply or something like that it's not a big deal especially for the folks up north in the cool season climate it's it's easy, okay? You you mow it, you fertilize it, and you water it. If you do those three things, life is going to go on. If you mow it too short, big deal, you know? It's going to grow back. If you don't mow it enough, big deal. It's going to grow back. Don't worry about it. Like the more you the more time that you spend on your lawn, the better it's going to be. So, I mean, that's the for sure and all, but just don't get so freaking freaked out about something so simple and that's what i'm trying to convey yeah. as no, well no i i i definitely can see that as well um because of just how you treat your lawn as as alan has said you treat your lawn like an old pair of jeans <laughs> i think that's what he said um yeah uh, he did and it's true it's just not a big deal so. somebody david david baron brought this up he said Barb's lawn is fake. Who is Barb? Why is this? A th I've seen this in your comments of your video, or and I know you've mentioned something about Barb in your videos. Who is Barb? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes. You're no, not. I'm you're not kidding, kidding, right? You don't know who. I don't Barb think is. I do. 
Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, then. That's a good thing that you don't know who Barb is. So Barb <laughs> is... You know that that uh, YouTuber <laughs> How To With Doc? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. You know him? Barb is Mr. Doc's neighbor. Okay. Okay? And he talks about her, saying, oh, I'm going to go treat Barb's lawn. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm going to go do this for Barb. Okay, and so that's just kind of a play. If I've ever mentioned Barb, that's a play on, and and people are mentioning it in the comments right now. Yeah, I can see it. They're well, mentioning that's what, Barb. That's what made me in think the comments. Of it. So Barb is Doc's neighbor. Okay, and he's 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 all over. I mean, I, I hate to talk about him because I don't really want to give him any kind of press. Okay, folks. He's not a real lawn guy. I mean, yeah, he knows how to do lawns, but he's in it for a different reason than some sure. of the other folks. Okay, I think I may Which have caught okay. wind of that, and I I had forgotten about it until you brought brought it, mentioned it. But because uh, for a, the longest time, I'm like, who is Barb? And I because I remember like YouTubing like <laughs> Barb's lawn, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Barb's lawn. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, folks. That is good stuff. Oh man. Anyway, so that's who it is, and yeah, you're gonna see me. I mean, I've I've done full blown videos of you know satire. satire oh yeah, videos. Well, you, I knew the Super you Juice know. one uh, a couple winters ago. That was yeah. Right. I mean, here's the deal, folks. I would love to go collaborate with Mr. Doc himself. I would love it. I would fly out there. I'd go hang out. We'd have a good good time, do the videos together. I think it would be fun. And I've reached out to him, okay? I've sent him messages, emails, whatever. But he just has not replied to me. So, you know, anybody else in this community, you, you reach out to them and they'll reply back. You know, the Mr. LCN himself, the same thing. I remember, you know, when I first started doing this in 2017 or 18 or something, I, I said, hey, Alan, I want, I want to come out to your house and mow your lawn. He says, OK, come on out. No big responded. That's how I knew he was for real. You know, but the other guy he just doesn't want to reply. And I would love to go collaborate with him. I think it would, he would it would be fun. And I don't know why he doesn't do collabs. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he's mad at me. I don't know. Oh yeah, I would probably. <laughs> get, I would steal. I would have to get Connor down. Alan, Alan said Connor would steal from Doc too, probably. <laughs> I'm not a thief, Al. Well, I mean, if we just go back a little bit, you did steal his flamingo. And then you just stole your picture. Now, I'm the one that got him to buy the flamingos, okay? I'm the one that conned him into getting them. So, you know, that was kind of mine, mine to begin with. And the picture of me, come on. That's mine. Well, he had the picture printed, so technically he owned the paper that your picture... No. <laughs> you... he, he, did, he, did not, he did not get my permission for that, okay? I get the first first right to that yeah because you so, never responded anyways. to my email when i was asking our uh people to send in their their pictures and logos oh yeah it's still in my inbox pal <laughs> it's still in my inbox you'll get your picture hey, don't you, you worry it, i uh somebody mentioned pete's name you should go do a collab with pete i love pete i met him at the gie and it was fantastic. Um, I I have Pete's phone number. We've chatted on the phone before. I think that sounds great. I would love to go do that. I, I, I remember I, him uh, mentioning you in his videos uh, about real mowing. Because traditionally, like, from what I know, like his initially his videos were all about you know mowing tall, tall fescue, and those types of things. And it wasn't within the last couple of years that he started doing more real mowing stuff as well as his tall fescue stuff. But I remember when he started that, he mentioned you. He's like, there's this guy out in Utah that's got this real nice lawn. And I, I think I, th- I think he threw up a picture of your lawn in his video. I can't remember for sure. But I know he he for sure gave you a little shout-out uh, when he was starting to 
dabble in the the real mowing videos and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm, that was that was the first time I met him too. I, I spoke with him on the phone a few times, but uh, last or 2019 GIE, that was when I met him as well. Super cool. Guy. He is genuine, folks. Oh yeah, he is a genuine yes. guy. One hundred percent. He is the same. What you see is what you get. It's the same. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Um. Well, we're 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 approaching the one hour mark, and uh, I wanted to uh, ask Connor, like, in regards to like starting before we end the show, uh, you know, in regards to like real mowing, what what is your advice? for somebody to starting, starting to real mode, do you go full bore? Do you tell them like test them things, test some things out to see if you want to do this in your entire lawn? Like, what would you, what would you do to, or what would you tell somebody to, to get started initially? Well, I think everybody wants the quote unquote golf sure. course lawn. And that's just the quintessential term that everybody says i want my lawn to look like a golf course okay and i hate to say it folks but golf courses use a cylinder mower okay you want your lawn to look like a golf course use what a golf course uses and do what a golf course does use the right mower and so golf courses they yes they have rotary mowers and they do um cut some of the fairways and the the fringe areas with the with the rotary mower and there's nothing wrong with that Um, but if you are looking to kind of under real mower and kind of cut low, it's a little bit of a struggle at first, but you've really kind of just got to go full bore at it and you have to be first and foremost, you got to realize that it's a little bit of a dedication. Like you said, okay, it's a, it's a time consuming beast. Uh, you're mowing at least two times a week, minimum two times a week. Uh, you can get by maybe a little bit less with some PGRs and some d- things like that. But the more that you mow your lawn, the thicker it will will get and the better it will stitch together. And the flat, the flatter it will become and the better it will look if the, the more that you mow it. So if you're wanting to go down that road, you have to first commit and realize that, hey, this is going to take a little bit more time than I may be used to. But the payoff is awesome. It looks amazing. Okay. Looks amazing. So, and then the other thing I was going to say is just, just know that it's going to cost a little bit more money. You've got to get your reel sharpened, your bed knife replaced and or sharpened. Um, You've got to tune it and look at the reel to bed knife before you mow every time to make sure you're cutting, make sure it's cutting. We're literally talking about scissors here, folks. You're cutting your lawn as as with a piece of uh, or a scissors, so it might cost a little bit more to maintain the mower. And you know, yes, that's a part of the deal. And I just I'm fine with it because it's so fun to me. So, but if you're if you're looking to kind of go that route, first you got to get a mower first and foremost. Um, if you're tr- going to try to go from tall to short or something like that, uh, just use a regular rotary mower, scalp that sucker down. And it's going to look bad at first, for sure. Or you can work it down over the course of a couple of mowings. Work it down to its lowest setting on your rotary mower and bag it. And get all the stuff out of there. But get yourself a thatch uh, thatch rake, uh, either a, a hand thatch rake or a power rake, okay? You've just got to really go at it. Um, you've just got to really kind of tear out all of that thatchy layer that lives above the surface of the soil, and if you're tall, if your lawn is tall, you've got that that layer of just thatch and about that roots that kind of live on the top of the soil, and those pretty much all have to be removed. And when you cut down into that, it your lawn just looks yellow because that that's the part of your lawn. If it's lawn that doesn't see the sun, it's sh- always shaded under there, so it just looks bad at first. But you just you know you work it down, or you just straight up scalp it. It's not gonna yeah, it's going to look terrible at first. And I think I have a, a video or something. I, I scalped my lawn like really bad in the back just because I wanted to see what would happen. I took my lawn from like three oh, and a half, four that. inches to a half, to yeah, a half that, inch, I think that was okay? one of your, like, uh, it was a video a couple years ago. I remember that video. 
Yeah, several years ago. You were saying, ago. you were saying in the video, like, my wife doesn't want this section real mode, but we're real mode. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in charge here, folks. I get to decide what we're doing on the lawn. Uh, she's like, well, the kids like it long. And I'm like, actually, go ask the kids. They like it short. Um, they like the way it feels. They like the carpet feel. It's thick. It's soft. So, you know, you just you have to be committed and you have to get that thatchy layer out. OK, whether you scalp it right off the bat or you just take it down slowly you got to get that thatch out and the best and, and that was the, that's the main thing that i learned one is you just got to start mowing a lot more often and then a, two a, to just to get started you've got to thatch it right off the bat and 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 like i was saying if you continue to mow low you know all season long year after year over time you the the turf gets so dense and so thick that it becomes like a big sponge and your mower just kind of rides over the top and you have to thin it out. You have to get a verticutter out there or a power rake and just thin it out. And it makes all the difference in the world. If you look at, you know, the green, uh, a golf green, for instance, they do the same thing. They verticut their greens because it just becomes too thick. They aerate and fill the green with sand and then they drag it in to, to get it nice and flat. The flat look, the, uh, one of the main reasons people love to see my lawn and the reason it looks so nice is because I've spent years leveling it, making it flat. And that is the, the appeal that people like is they see it out there and it just looks smooth and flat. Okay. And that, that is, that is everything. Just making it flat and smooth, just taking the time to level the lawn makes all the difference in the world. And Mr. R he will tell you the same thing. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Knorr, and all you guys out there listening, okay, out in radio land, they all say, I can't do that at my house. I can't do that at my house. It does not going to work. It's too hot, too hot, this, this. For whatever reason, they say, I can't real mow my lawn. That is bull. Because Mr. Ryan Knorr tried to give me the same crap. And guess who got Mr. Ryan Knorr into real ro real cylinder mowing? Yeah, me, folks. I'm the one that taught him how to do that. And he said, I can't do that here. I can't do that here. And my climate's not good. I'm like, you can. Just go down the street. Look, go to your local golf course. If they can do it, you can do it. It just takes work. That's pretty much it, Dennis Page. It just takes hard work. And I would say the correct grass type, because you can't do it to tall fescue. Yeah. But if you're in the transition zone and you want to go low, get Bermuda. That's what I would do. <clears throat> yeah. If you want to cut low and you're in the transition zone, just bite the bullet and get Bermuda. Well, um... Uh, in addition to before we sign off, uh, do you have any 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 future plans? Any big things you got coming for the channel this year, or in your lawn this year, or the she shed, or anything like that? Um. Well, you know, I'd have to say that I'm not the best person when it comes to planning <laughs> and stuff like that because I just. Uh, I'm just literally going on the fly, and my everybody's like, "Well, you got to do something. You got to change your channel. You got to do this and that." And I'm just like, "I don't want to do that. I just want to do what I'm doing. If people want to watch it, great. If they don't, then that's fine as well. I'm doing this for fun, folks. So, not really. No, I don't have anything. Like, I do plan to to keep doing what I've been doing, and I do plan to. My my life is always an ongoing project. Everything in my life is kind of ongoing. It's never nothing's ever completed, and I'm always starting new things and doing new things. So, your guess is as good as mine as to what the plans are for this year. Well, it, what about your uh, your front lawn where you did all? Is it still all KBG or did you put perennial rye in there as well now? Yeah. Yes, I did. did. I did put. Um, yeah. So, because there was that that I big did. large large patch by the tree that was, uh, it's still it's still bare. Did it did it fill in much last year? 
Uh, it definitely did fill in quite a bit, but it's still got a ways to go. And it's just, it's hard. I, I've seeded it several times. I've thatched it and put seed down. doesn't seem to want to take. And so I, I killed the lawn because I wanted to have everything uniform. Okay. I wanted everything to look completely uniform and I wanted to have a monoculture to make it it looked clean and fresh and nice. So I planted one variety of Kentucky bluegrass, Everest, and it's a beautiful grass. However, the whole main reason I killed my lawn, it didn't work, okay? I still had lots of poa in the lawn, still had lots of ryegrass that came up, and I think I just had dormant, uh, lots of dormant seeds in my, my old stand of grass that uh, kind of sprung to life. And so I had... It just it wasn't as satisfactory to me as where, what yeah. I had hoped for it to be, and so I just said, "Screw it." The rye grass is a beautiful lawn. Like it is a beautiful lawn. I we do have love rye grass. Recording. I, I do I, think I it's a little it bit of Ryan. cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Ryan knows. Ryan knows how I feel. I couldn't care less what I he know. says. I'm... He's wrong. Everything he says. <laughs> I'm just feeding into the, the little so, battle you guys have. The fo- no, but for real, folks, ryegrass is a beautiful lawn, but it's <clears> all work. It's all sh- it's all show and no work. Okay, I mean Ryan will beg to differ, <laughs> but for me, it's all show and no work. It's like anybody can grow and throw out ryegrass, and it, it will look amazing. It always does. It stripes beautifully. It's amazing lawn. It's the texture is beautiful, but. It doesn't take any work to to get it done. You just throw it out and it grows. Like bluegrass is, takes a lot more to nurture it to make it look good. But anyways, I got you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we all know. <laughs> um. Well, I'm gonna wrap things up here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. I know I had a lot of uh the audience that connor has in his channel come over and i really really appreciate uh that for everybody coming over uh and watching tonight's show i appreciate all the regulars i know i saw you in here i know i didn't go through the normal shout out of everybody i i apologize that we had a lot of people in here and i just wanted to just give a general thank you to everybody for coming in uh and i really really do appreciate that if you wouldn't mind before you leave uh, tonight, please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Um, I had a great time, Connor. Thank you so much for coming on. It, it does mean a lot to have somebody like you come on the show. Uh, somebody I've watched for a long time before I ever actually made videos of my own. So thanks, thanks for coming on. So I do want to say one more thing before we close. Yeah. And that is um, a lot of people ask me, so what should I do if I want to start my own YouTube channel, if I want to make videos or whatever? And I just kind of want to say a couple of things before we close with that. Um, if you want to do your own YouTube channel, just make a freaking video, okay? Just make a video. It's going to suck. And it's just, you know, like you were saying earlier, the first videos, they're just, they're, they're quite bad. But it's okay. You know, my first video was the same. Pretty bad. But, you know... You just got to start doing it and get comfortable and you you will find your own yep. groove what works for you. Just do it, make videos, and if people want to watch you and they like you and they like your personality or whatever, it'll stick. You know, if you're boring or whatever, maybe it might not stick. But it, with hard work and persistence, yes, you can build an yep. audience with hard work and persistence. It is a lot of work, yes, but is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, for sure it is. Look at all the friends that I've made through YouTube. So, so, so many. I've traveled all over the country just meeting up with people to talk about grass. You know, like, of all things. It's just, it's fun. So, anyways. No, that's a great point. That's, that's all a, I have to say. That's a great point. Um, one that I would 100% attest to because my first videos were terrible, but you just got to you gotta keep at it. And just if do you, it. And if you find that you like it, keep going. If you don't find you like it, then you can stop. There's, and then... If, and you don't even need the fancy equipment yeah. either. Just use your phone. Just use your phone, you know, until you figure out if this is what you want to do. Just use your phone. The camera's great on the phone. I made lots and lots of videos using my phone. I mean, now I use a GoPro, and mm-hmm. it's fine. But the phone works just as well, yep. really. Well, no, I, I appreciate you you mentioning that, uh, Connor. That's I think that can mean a lot to smaller people thinking about doing it. 
um, coming from a bigger YouTuber because sometimes people get caught up in the equipment and all that kind of stuff. But it's one of those things that I feel like if you start and you like it, you can keep going. If you start and you don't like it, you can stop. And if you want to come back to it later, you can. So it's it's just it's pretty diverse. And there is some of that pressure you feel sometimes like, oh, I got to keep making videos. I got to keep making videos. I would set that pressure aside and just find what works into your schedule and do what you like to do and those types of things. Because then if you're doing that, people are going to see that see the genuine you and your videos rather than you just trying to put out a video to make a video. So anyway, yes, good point, Connor. Thanks. That's right a great on. way to end the show. All right, guys. Thanks. Right on, folks. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all you guys, and that's not a lie. I love you guys. You guys are the best viewers on the YouTubes. My viewers, okay, are the best on the YouTubes. We appreciate you. We love you. Keep watching. You know, you are the reason that we do this. Exactly. 100%. <clears throat> Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. We will be back at it uh, next Friday, uh, and I will have... Alan Hayne on the show on the next Friday's uh, Oh, Mr. Celebrity himself. So I'm excited to have him on the show. And uh, yeah, I hope this was a great start to your weekend. I hope you have a great weekend, a relaxing weekend. Go have fun. Hopefully the sun's shining. Hopefully it's a little warm wherever you may be. But spring is right around the corner. We are not far from it at all. Stay positive. And we will see you next week, guys. Thanks so much. See ya.